The Snowdonian Mountains in North Wales are some of the best walking country in the entire United Kingdom and every year thousands upon thousands of people come to enjoy the beautiful scenery and to hike in the hills and on the mountain trails. But for early aviators, the mountains here represented a potentially lethal threat and Snowdonia has the unfortunate accolade of being one of the country's major sites for aircraft crashes and wrecks. And there are two particular mountains that stand out, even amongst this carnage. To the north of the beautiful Ogwin Valley is the Canada Range. Apologies to Welsh speakers in advance. Somewhat less well-travelled than the more popular hiking routes further south around Snowdon itself and the town of Llemberis, the Canada are a great walking country in their own right, and even feature a little-known addition. Herds of wild ponies, one of the very few such populations in the UK. But the Canada also hold another, rather darker secret. Caned David and Llewellyn, the plain killers. Standing at over a thousand metres each, these two mountains, which are joined together by a curtain of rock, have had at least half a dozen fatal crashes occur on their rocky slopes over the years. And as I was lucky enough to spend a fair bit of time in 2022 in the area, I thought I would trek up and visit one of the most famous of these crash sites, Avro Lincoln RF-511. On the night of the 14th of March 1950, RF-511 took off from RF Scampton in Lincolnshire to conduct a night navigation exercise. Flying the Big Bomber was squadron leader John Talbot Lovell Shaw, a pilot of considerable experience. During the Second World War, he had been shot down in 1941 while flying Wellingtons over Northern Europe. He had subsequently won the Military Cross when he had tunnelled out of a prison of a war camp with a penknife. Plus, he wasn't the only one in the crew with extensive experience. Of the six men aboard, five had served during the war. Unfortunately, all their experience wouldn't save them from a combination of bad luck and lousy weather. The latter factor got very bad, with low-lying cloud obscuring visibility, and so Lincoln RF-511 was ordered to divert to RAF Valley on the island of Anglesey. But problems with the aircraft's radio navigation system meant that the crew were forced to request ground instruction to find the airbase, and somewhere along the line, a tragic mistake was made. Instead of finding the airbase at RAF Valley, the Lincoln turned towards the mainland and into the Carnadies. With visibility so bad, the aircraft was flying as low as it could, trying to find some navigation point for the crew to fix their location. At around 2.30 in the morning of the 15th, people sleeping in the town of Bethesda were awakened and alarmed by the roar of a multi-engine aircraft flying low over their houses. The Lincoln crew, still trying to figure out where they were, were flying at only around 2,500 feet. That's 762 metres well below the summits of many of the mountains in the area. Witnesses said the big aircraft passed overhead, apparently not showing any problems with their navigation lights on, but much too low for the terrain they were in. Lincoln RF-511 disappeared into the murk, flying up the Hlafar Valley, which leads straight to the rock ridge that connects Daffid and Llewellyn. Shortly after, the residents of the town heard a huge explosion. Local volunteers and the mountain rescue team headed out, hoping to perhaps find some survivors, but when they reached the crash site at 5.20 in the morning, just beneath the ridge summit, they found that the crew had all been killed. Though the site is only four miles from Bethesda, there is only the footpath up the valley and no vehicular access. As a result, the bodies were recovered, but some of the wreckage left in place, and the site has long been one to attract air crash researchers and hikers. There are a number of ways to approach the two mountains, but I followed the same valley as the Lincoln went up, starting just above the town of Bethesda. Yeah, no, not here. And farmers and ponies. And sheep. But they're basically part of the furniture up here. Yeah, hey, you flossy. <laughs> so yeah, it came up this valley. Obviously, couldn't see in the fog. And that's uh, 
the two mountains and the ridge line that hit, which are on the other side of which uh, I think four or five planes hit the other side. I'm going to try and get around to them as well if I can at some point. It's a brisk walk following the Afan Lafar up the valley, with the terrain getting more broken as you approach the ridge. So I finally managed to walk up high enough into the valley to get out of the that low winter sun, try and get some film. And there's your uh, Daffid, I think, is up here. That one, and Llewellyn over here. And you've got this huge curtain of rock in between them. And uh, it shows how bad the conditions must have been. That when uh, the Lincoln flew up here, the pilot was a deeply experienced pilot, a veteran of the bomber campaign over Germany. And he, he must have just been completely blind, trying to fly low and try and get sight of some landmark. But yeah, so he flew up this valley and it flew up and met its doom, unfortunately, like many other planes that have come up here. I believe it crashed just up there, over there, over in front of me, into the rock cone here. I'll have to climb up and have a look. As I climbed higher, I encountered another example of the local wildlife. I was hoping to spot some, but uh, you have wild horses up here. Driven down once a year by local farmers, the ones they find anyway. They get dewormed and defleed, and their manes are trimmed. But uh, I might see if I can get closer, but they're obviously semi wild, basically wild, so I don't know how close I'll get. The wild horses are a bit of a novelty in the UK. As far as I'm aware, the only other populations of wild ponies is in Exmoor. We've got a quite a healthy population up here in the Carnegie Mountains. Well, the crash site is around here somewhere. But apparently I've got some company. And that's the way back down to Bethesda. Climbing up the scree slope further, I came across the first parts of the debris field. So, as far as I can tell, this is the crash site of Avro Lincoln 5.11 and as you see there's still some debris up here there's uh, many crashes in the Snowdonia range and I think the National Park has made quite strenuous efforts to clear up most of debris from crashes but as you see this one I guess is just a little bit too far up and a little bit too big looks like we've got the wings bar and other parts of debris from where the crash happened. There's not a lot up here. There is a uh, memorial stone somewhere else. We'll try and find it. But uh, yes, yeah, as I said before, RF 511 got lost, took a wrong turn over the sea, or over Angle Sea, came up to this valley in the fog, and it shows how dense it must have been for them to get up here. Uh, they obviously didn't know they were in the mountains managed to follow the valley all the way up here and then came to a tragic end just beneath the uh, peak of I think it's uh, the well in there obviously if anyone ever comes up here please don't touch anything it's uh, just a sign of respect for those who died up here really more debris uh, some sort of uh, Hydraulic strap by the look of it. I think a lot of it, I think it hit up here and then a lot of the debris rolled down the hill. It does end up in the stream. Yeah, pieces of aircraft aluminium strewn various spots and some sort of uh, an engine part.
I guess that's the propeller hub. Oh, the Marlins, I see. Yeah, look at that Marlins. Let's see anything else immediately. So, Avro 511 flew over Bethesda down the valley, up up this valley in uh, thick fog, and and crashed about here. And the tragic thing is, they are they would have been so close to like getting over the top of this mountain. I'm not, I can get up on foot now. It's a uh, hundred meters maybe. Just real bad luck for them. And the other thing is, there is another wreck just up here somewhere, a Wellington, which crashed somewhere with uh, Australian crew. And I'm going to see if I can find some remains of that, if there's anything as well. Wellington DV800 actually crashed very close to the site of Lincoln RF 511 in July 1942. Once again, the crew were on a navigation exercise and were similarly undone by radio failure and low cloud. All five of the crew were killed. So climbing up a bit higher from where the wing spar was in the stream there's more wreckage now I'm looking for a Wellington uh, can't remember the, off the top of my head can't remember the registration number but it crashed in 1942 only a few hundred yards up from the Lincoln which just goes to show that this is a real killer this, this region it is Right at the top of it, almost here. Yeah. He's almost got over. So I'm going to go down and have a look. I don't break my neck. I'll try and see. I suspect this is more Lincoln wreckage, which means the Lincoln crashed up here and those big parts washed down. It might be the Wellington. And a fair bit of. Oh! Hey! <laughs> We had quite a lot of rain up here recently. Okay. That wouldn't disturb anything. But uh, I think this is from the Lincoln, but obviously it's difficult to say for sure. And I'll keep looking around for the Wellington wreckage, but I believe that's in one, one pile somewhere up here on the hill. So I'll keep looking. Yep. Uh, I'm guessing this. I don't know. Maybe this is the, no, I think this is where they're linking here. Yeah. So there's more more debris up here, scattered around on this rock fall and this stream uh, spring. There's all pieces of steel and aluminium. And I'm not sure if this is the Wellington or the Lincoln. I think it's the Lincoln. There's quite a lot here. Well, a lot of bits and pieces for, for a big bomber like a Lincoln, not a lot really. Uh, okay, I'll keep climbing up for a bit. Let's see. Wait. Never let it be said that YouTube isn't thrilling entertainment. There's an atlas, look like aluminium in there, and amongst the rocks as well. There's more down here. Yeah, there's more up here. Okay, yeah. Uh, shut down so I can climb up to see if I can find this Wellington. I never did identify the Wellington crash site but was at least able to appreciate the view as I approached the top of the climb. Though, as you will hear in the recording, the wind started to pick up and the weather began to change. So obviously, for us, recreationally, I can have a real joy, a real pleasure. A day like today. Yeah, in those earlier days, navigation was a far more haphazard affair. Mountains like this were real killers, and uh, we should be thankful we don't have to uh, worry so much about it. Of course, accidents still do happen, but yeah, not too sad. So, 
much to my great surprise, I managed to get to the top of the ridge. As you can see from this point, there's the down in the bottom. Ridge down this side, you had a Lincoln RF 511 and the Wellington RDV 800, I think it is, crashed on this side. It runs between Llewellyn and Daffid. But yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm done for the day. I think it's time to get walk back down the hill. Alright, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. And so I set off back down, but found another relic I had hoped to locate. Now I believe this is a uh, shelter that was built by Mountain Rescue, I think, out of some of the parts from the Lincoln. Oops. People get stuck up here in bad weather. Still serving, I guess. And on the way down, I thought I might as well have a closer look at the wild horses, which led to some further discoveries. And as a reminder, that uh, the RAF still use North Wales as one of their major training grounds. Welsh Canada. Semi fair, I suppose they do have some interaction. I'm generally very keen on that. Uh... Well, so looking at the horses, I think. I think uh, is this another part of the plane wreck? Oops. Assuming it is. You know, things you find when you're not looking for them. No, is it? I think it is. I see what, yeah, that's part of the Lincoln wing. Oh wow. Would have missed it completely if it wasn't for the horses. Ed Nash's Military Matters and Low Grade Nature documentary as well. And that concluded that particular adventure, except for the long slog back down the mountain with wet feet. If you like your outdoor activities and are lucky enough to be in the North Welsh area, I'd thoroughly recommend a walk in that region, though please don't touch anything you find, and do be aware that the North Wales mountains are notoriously fickle with their weather so be sure you are competent and fit enough to manage the conditions. And that about wraps up this video. Have a good one, and happy walking.